Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of True Dungeon Talk with Trent. My name is Trent of TrentTokens.com. I'm a big, big fan of the game called True Dungeon and a very avid collector of tokens, the gaming pieces used to play the game, which you can see on multiple shelves of back here. Uh, in today's special episode, we're going to be interviewing Jeff Martin, the creator of True Dungeon, and we're going to be making some world premiere announcements about Gen Con 2024. We're going to be showing the world premiere of the teaser trailer and discussing the adventures that are going to be at Gen Con in 2024. Ooh, I'm excited. Uh, but first, let's do some YouTube housekeeping. If you haven't clicked like and subscribed or like this video or subscribe to the channel yet, please do that now. It's very helpful to spread the love of True Dungeon and this show, which is the whole goal of the show, to spread the love of True Dungeon. So please like and subscribe and click share and choose your notification options and all that other stuff. Uh, one other thing before we get to Jeff, I want to share some personal news with you. Recently, I went on a, a date night with the wife, and here's a picture from that uh, date night. This is at Gotham Archery in Brooklyn, New York. They also have a branch in Manhattan. It's a wonderful place if you've, if you've never been. It's very, uh, very cool. Uh, they require people to take an introductory class uh, in case you wanted to rent lanes there. So, of course, we took the introductory class and here's a photo of me uh, and some arrows that I had shot. Now, for those of you who do not know, I was a Boy Scout and I have uh, won uh, numerous archery contests when I was a teenager. It's been a long time since I, you know, did some archery, but it's just kind of in your bones. You know, you kind of remember. I even at a, uh, I think it was last year, or maybe the year before, at a company retreat, we had archery there and I placed second out of everyone who participated. So I was, you know, quite proud of my prowlessness. Uh, and then, and there's my wife who has never ever picked up a bow in her life never done archery at all and her first time ever she does this she completely kicks my butt look at that so there's her and here's me who has done this many many years and consider myself pretty good at this and then there's my wife who's never done it before at all so yeah, I just wanted to lament and tell you uh, and, and share my pain about uh, uh, my wife's incredible ability to uh, kick my butt at, at, at anything. Uh, but uh, I don't feel too bad because today she made fried chicken, maybe to, uh, for me to cry in my sorrows. It's my favorite meal. So uh, I, I still love her. Uh, but speaking of love, who doesn't love Jeff Martin, the creator of True Dungeon? So without further ado, let's introduce and, and show you Jeff Martin. Hey. Hey, yo. Oh. Oh, the audience loves you. Look at all that. They do. Look at those adoring fans. Ha -ha! Hello, Jeff. How are you? I am well. Thanks for having me. So what do you think about that? Uh, let's first get to the important thing. Uh, my, my, my wife kicking my butt at archery. What in the yeah. world? What's, what's up with well, that? You know, in your defense, when you were young, the moon wasn't quite in its orbit yet. So oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> true. Right, right, right. A few billion years ago. That's right. Yeah. So, so yeah. we're, we're going to blame gravity and uh, the gravitational pull and the ocean waves and all that. Yeah, it was a full moon. There's all kinds of stuff. Going on. Well, it's it's if we think about this from a Trudunja point of view, her decks is much better, right? Oh, yes. Yes, I would agree. Right. So, yeah. And and speaking of that, she went to, I have been trying to get her to go to a convention for years. And she finally went to her first convention last year. Uh and MomoCon, because I conned her to come and, and visit family who we have in Tennessee. So that was that was like the best way I could get her to go. Not that she didn't want to go. She'd like for me to go and have, have fun, you know, my my, my my free time, if you will, because, you know, I'm real busy with work. So she finally went with me, and she was really competitive. I mean, she was like really, you know, sliding and trying to, you know, hit well. I was really surprised. I thought yeah. she was going to be like cute in the corner, but no, she was ready to yeah. to. To kill him so that's uh, awesome was, about true dungeon anybody can get into it so yeah cool. yeah yeah i mean she's i mean i talk about it all the time but she had never done it before and she got right in there i was really happy and she went to game hall last year and she's planning to go to game hall this year so um yeah welcome to the show where we talk about how great my wife is a true dungeon <laughs> and archery Ah, all right. So let's uh, say hello to some people in the audience. Uh, let's see. Hello, Kevin. Uh, Guild Strife, Love and Life, 877. Tom, hello. Larry, David Gerspot. Hey, buddy. David Haas, Andy, 
Uh, oh, Jen. Oh, my wife's in chat. Ah, we're talking about you, wife. She gets really uh, shy. So sorry uh, for talking about you too much. Uh, Belinda, hello. Huzzah for Mrs. Trent. That's right. Uh, and my wife says, don't forget she's Korean. So that's what she was saying. It's it's just, you know, she's, I think she thinks Koreans are automatically good at archery. So can't, can't say no. Uh, and David wants to know, was she used an Ios bow? Maybe that's it. She had a legendary bow. And Chris thinks she has 20 decks. I agree. I agree. Kevin says she had arrows of true flight also. Uh, and David Haas says, yay, Jen. I agree. Yay, Jen, for, for, for real. All right. So, um, so yes, how are you? How's the family? How's life? How's things going on in the, uh, in the, in the dungeon crafting world? And, and what's going on in that background? So those are all, the, those are all my first questions. Well, this is actually a set for uh, the venture coming up, the virtual one coming up next week. So I thought I'd uh, jump in here and uh, give you guys a little preview. But everything is going well here. It's a beautiful day. It's like 80 degrees. It's sunny. It's beautiful. I took a little walk, uh, did a little dungeon design, a little typing. Had a good day. Mm, yeah. I like to say every day I wake up is a good day. But anytime you play in True Dungeon, or I guess creating True Dungeon must be a great day. All right, so we speak of True Dungeon and the next adventure. Uh, let's talk about that one next. And, of course, anybody in the audience, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, throw them out at any time um, uh, to help my eyeballs grab questions. If you don't mind, type the word question, and then, you know, then your question, and then I'll try to make sure I get to all those. So speaking of virtual and the background behind you, next week, oh. April 5th through 7th, uh, Desert Nights, and I think this is part four. Yeah, part four. V23, yep. the Onyx Tomb. Ooh, sounds scary. What can you tell us about this? Yeah, yeah. after uh, some traveling over the last few months, you finally get to the tomb that you've been looking for and uh, it's trying to find something from in inside, maybe. We'll see if you can find the tier of creation or not. Uh, but finally, you get to see some of the cool sets that we uh, have uh, prepared for this uh, virtual series, so yeah, really like the they, John and the crew did a great job in decorating these sets, and we have a couple of NPCs live for the puzzle, so it should be a really good adventure. Mm. Now, is it uh, is it cheating if I ask you if the room that you're yeah that, that's behind you is a puzzle room? Is it a combat room? It's that, a puzzle. That, it's a that's puzzle. All I'm, I'm gonna say. Okay, that kind of looks like a dinner table, or maybe it's just I'm I'm mm -hmm. I'm. I'm uh, you know what's that word okay. when you're putting things on yourself because it's your brain everything looks like a dinner table to me so oh man so um i guess we have to go inside it kind of, kind of sounds scary you sure we can't do this from the yeah. outside like from a, well, a safety border <laughs> yeah and the the we have a really cool first room when you're trying to get inside i really like it it's a really interesting room it, oh, they, again yeah. john did a great job on getting it all set up so it looks really cool Looks like you're going into the Onyx tomb. Wow. Now, is the thing that we're looking at, is that pyramid structure, is that the Onyx tomb, or is the Onyx tomb yeah. inside? Oh, that, that whole thing. Yeah. Now, yeah. is that whole thing made of Onyx? Who knows? You'll find out. Maybe oh. it's just... I don't know. Onyx might be a substance or might be the color. You'll find out. See what's inside. Oh interesting all right so uh people in chat who are much smarter than me at dungeon questions feel free to ask some questions here so we can uh try to you know dig more out of jeff here uh now another thing of course with these uh, virtual adventures and all adventures is the fun uh treasure that we get and the completion tokens i i must say that the completion tokens have been really cool uh, this year for virtual uh, in essence, granting another level of, of psychic power for everybody who who grabs this. They're, so they're really cool tokens. And this is yeah. the next one here for V23, the Onyx Tomb, Crown of Psychic Power, imbue psychic power, and plus one tier psychic power up to seventh. So pretty cool idea, yeah, I think. Um, if you're looking for some psychic power, this is the way to grab it. Yep. Yeah. Good job. I think it's really also great for for newer players too, uh, who yeah. didn't get a chance to collect the teeth. So I think it's a, kind of yeah. a, like the next phase, uh, if you're not a, a tooth holder. Um, I play with a group, 
have a couple groups and one of them we do a sealed pack run so we love these completion tokens because then we get a, it's pretty high level stuff to do the psychic ability so i think it's kind of cool um all right so we have a question here from uh christopher abruscato uh question is the golden obelisk before or after uh the desert nights good question it comes in our story art comes right after the uh, v24 so it's mm. kind of we've got it all set up when you yeah, there's like an epilogue when you go to when you go through v24 next month and you'll it all set up the golden obelisk call for you cool so v23 in april v24 in may and the first chance for some people to grab uh a, a spot at the golden obelisk will be june uh and 24 leads you right into that so that's great yeah. All right, cool. So uh, Christopher agrees. He says, cool. Uh, all right. So, but right after Origins is Gen Con. And speaking yeah. of Gen Con, it's one of the best places uh, or conventions to see a lot <laughs> uh, and visit Correct. and get a, a nice badge for and a room. Uh, so for those people who want to volunteer, you can go to tdvols.com. But I think time's running out to volunteer. Is that right? Yep, um, the staff's going to start um, filling spots on Monday. So this is your last chance to get in if you want to get a good spot, um, something you really want to do. We could always, of course, use coaches and combat DMs, and, and good NPCs are great too. So if you're thinking about it, it's time to pull the trigger because uh, come Monday they're going to start filling in all the choice spots. So please do it now. Yeah, the volunteers are amazing. Um they're just the lifeblood of, of True Dungeon. Every time I, I go to any convention, uh, they seem always uh, joyful and happy in what they're doing and always very helpful. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I first started, it was just so much information. It was really hard to kind of follow. Uh, and the, the volunteers were really, really very helpful on how to do things. So if you're a nice person and you love, uh, you know, helping others, this is a great opportunity. Um, so speaking of Gen Con, the big thing that we wanted to talk about, uh, today is of course, um, the Gen Con information. So with, with that in mind, I, I believe we, uh, might have some breaking news. Yeah, breaking news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, breaking news. Oh, <laughs> any, any excuse to use that graphic is a good, good excuse for me. All right, so our breaking news is we are about to watch the world premiere of the okay. True Dungeon Gen Con 2024 teaser trailer. So let's just dive right in and watch it. Enjoy. Gotcha. <laughs> oh my god, that's cool. Uh so uh yeah, I'm not uh, uh how about uh, okay, who wants to see that again? Uh, I I, I want to see it again. Yeah. All right, let, let's watch it again. <laughs> All right, so let's watch it again. I'm gonna turn our videos on too so we can uh watch ourselves okay. watching it. Right, here we go. Let's watch it again. Oh Four adventures.
Oh, my Jiminy Crickets. Four yes, yes. adventures. Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's just soak that yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's, this is a fun chiller to make. It, we didn't want to give a lot away, so we did some generic stuff. But I think it amply uh, kind of gives you a teaser of what each one will be like. So, yeah. It is called the teaser trailer. So, yeah. Uh, Wow, 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 wow. All right, so uh, let's see. People, let me just check the chat here. Uh, Christopher says, oh, my God, me. He said he wanted to see it again. I'm good. Uh, Zalfin AX says, hype. Guildstrife says, woohoo, looking forward to this. Kevin says, super excited. Love and Life says, super hype for this. Uh, Fred has a question, and we're about to answer that question. And <laughs> Christopher says, seven room starter pack. Uh, yep. Uh, Belinda has a question. Uh, okay, that's a good question. So um, let's maybe ask that one now or answer that one now. And Kevin sure. says, great starter pack runs. So I agree. Uh, Belinda has, uh, and, and Tom says, so many dungeon and more sealed runs. Yeah, I know. I love the sealed runs. And I also think it's really great for uh, new people who've never uh, tried True Dungeon before. It's a perfect excuse to come give it a try. And the best thing to me about sealed runs is from the very second you start, you're, you're doing what True Dungeon is all about, sharing and helping each other. The teamwork begins. As soon as you open up your tent pack, you're like, well, I'm a wizard. I can't use this sword. Who needs a sword? Boom. And and the camaraderie has begun. The helping people has begun. The teamwork has begun. And you've only been sitting there for like a minute. So I just, I'm getting goosebumps. That's just the, the absolute greatest thing uh, about True Dungeon is helping each other and working together as a team. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Belinda has a question. How will XP work for uh, Curse of Crimson Isle and Tomb of Terror Redux? So uh, what what do you think, Jeff? How will the XP work? That's a great question. Um, for Curse of Crimson Isle, it'll, it'll work just like normally. If you played that adventure at MomoCon or at uh, GameholeCon, Anything you do at Gen Con, of course, won't stack just because it's the same adventure. Now, we did add a really cool new puzzle. Um, should be a lot of fun. It's a kind of a group participation thing. It's really fun. Uh, we did add that, but I, I don't think it's enough to go, to just say it's all new XP. I mean, it would help sell tickets and all, but I just think that's just a little too far to go. And then as far as the... Um, Tomb of Terror Redux, that's kind of a more of a murky thing. Uh, we did add another really cool puzzle. I wish I would have thought of it last year because, <laughs> oh, man, that would have been awesome last year because it's a great homage to the original dungeon. Um, but, again, uh, it's just one it's just one extra room, and so we're, it, it's going to stack just like uh, Curse of Crimson except, you know, with the uh, uh, one that was presented last year at Gen Con. So if you played last year's Gen Con – Grand Deluxe Adventure, Tomb of Terror, um, whatever you do this year, the XP will just, you know, be in the same uh, showboat side of the thing. They won't stack unless, of course, you get to a farther room than what you did last year. So, so normal stacking rooms, uh, rules yep. because the name is the same, yeah. basically, the name of the adventure. Yeah. Uh, and Belinda says, thanks for those. And David Haas says, so many power cables to run. <laughs> Poor David. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, we talked about that. You're on that crew. Uh, so let's. This here's a screenshot of the tra teaser trailer, which is great. Uh, it's a great job by Rob uh, and the whole team. You know that's going to be working on these. So we have four separate immersive gaming events. I love it. Uh, right off the bat, Temple of the Dune Viper. So this is new. Uh, deluxe multipath adventure set in Caldea, uh, yeah. Peter's world, uh, and it's and actually, I think I might have teased this before, um, but Peter is actually uh, he and I are in discussions to be a, a guest this year. Um, right now, we're penciled in to uh, do the show with him in July to talk about his experience with helping uh, True Dungeon. Get it, get off the ground, uh, and all the, the fun that goes along with that. Um, if you missed it last year, um, uh, Jeff and Peter and I I did a like an interview 
session with them at Gen Con, which is really cool. So this will be a great chance to hear some of that information and, and some new information. So this is uh, Peter's World, Caldea. Uh, next up, yes. Curse of Crimson Isle with a new puzzle room. Tomb of Terra Redux, uh, a new puzzle room. And yeah, seven but, rooms. And remember that we're yeah we're we're taking all nine rooms that are possible and kind of converting them all into a in a regular dungeon. So we took the best of the seven best seven out of nine, and we think and then uh, because there was a, there was a multi path in this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, starter pack only, and then the golden obelisk. Four rooms, starting pack only. And if anybody's watching this video and you've never tried true dungeon before, I would suggest you start there if you're a little timid about things and if uh you're ready to dive right in then go and play them all but even if you're just like right on the fence and you're not quite sure i think the golden obelisk is is is, is for you uh, so speaking of that let's talk about each of these separately and again if anyone in the chat has any questions uh please ask away uh and fred is happy hello fred uh happy to hear about the new puzzles so here we go. The first one is the Golden Obelisk, four rooms, starter pack only. And this is in case you can't make it to Origins this year, uh, or you, you've you've never tried True Dungeon before. This is this is a great one, I would suggest. So what can you tell us about the Golden Obelisk? Sure. Um, well, also point out that it will be. Um, this is probably what we'll, well, this is what we'll be running at uh, San Japan. So uh, mm. that's another opportunity. If you can't okay. take it to Gen Con or Origins, you can play it there. Um, I hope you see it at one of those three shows with this. This, is, this has been designed to be a great um, starter dungeon for like uh, new folks that haven't maybe played before or maybe played once. It should, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be uh, fun, exciting combats, fun, exciting interactive puzzles, and um, some great NPCs. And it should be a real fun adventure, um, especially the the puzzle rooms I really like. Um, I think I, I was like, wow, I should just put this in the regular adventure, but um, <laughs> I think you just leave them right there and we'll try to make as many new True Dungeon fans as we can all over yeah. Columbus and Indy and in, down in San Antonio. Wow, yeah, so if you can't make Gen Con, uh, you can try Origins. If you can't make either, you can try San Japan. Great, great chance to see this this fun dungeon. Uh, all right. So uh, again, if anyone has any questions, please ask away in the chat. Let's move on to uh, the next one on our list here. Uh, okay. So we do have a question from David. Hi, David. Uh, question: Golden Obelisk treasure handled same as last year for conquest. Cannot equip unless in starter pack. So we're, the question's about the golden obelisk. Yes, the only cool things pack. that is in the starter pack, that's what you can equip, right? Yes, that's correct. Yep, just try to keep it as simple as we can for the new folks and uh, uh, keep it, uh, yeah, that, I think that's the best way to go to try to get new people in and just limit it to that starter pack. And then, like you said, it really pr promotes immediately the whole group dynamic thing where, you know, you're a wizard, you get some armor, I can't use this. <laughs> and I, I love it when people start trading and talking and they really get some... Um, you know, it, a lot of RPG stuff, it's competition. This isn't. This is like, hey, the competition is the whole group against the dungeon. So you want yeah. to make everybody. Man, I just uh, love it. I, I know I'm a gigantic dork. When I, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. When I, at Gen Con or any convention, and I w just walk down the center and, and look from side to side at all the different rooms, people prepping, and I see a bunch of new people sharing tokens, I'm telling you, Oh, if I never played True Dungeon again, if I could just watch that every now and then, I'd be a happy man. Because that is just, it brings me so much joy to see everybody, uh, you know, helping each other out and opening tokens and, and getting excited about the tokens. It, it's just, I mean, it's just a supreme joy for me. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So that's that. Uh, speaking of that, how about an advanced question for the ninth level people who happen Ooh. to play this? That's plus one ac and then i think at fifth level or sixth level rather there's the plus one treasure those two also don't count right because it's not in the starter pack how firm is that well you will have to uh i should is know the answer question, question. <laughs> yeah i would uh yeah i'm not going to give a yes or no answer to that okay. one i'm pretty sure what we did it was they did get the extra token um 
but I'm not going to say that for sure. Um, I think at Momocon last year, and this is not an official answer, obviously, I don't think I equipped either or even said anything about either. Uh, so I think Momocon was a starter pack only last year too, right? Am I yes. remembering correctly? Okay, so I yeah. think it was just whatever was in the starter pack. That's how I did it, but I don't know. Um, all right, so... Well, yeah, we'll look at how we did it at Bar Beard's Treasure last year at Gen Con. We'll do it that way. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I did, but again, it's not not the necessarily the official way. But Belinda says last year players who were six level or higher could get one more draw. I think is what she says. So anyway, yeah. that might be something to uh, to throw out there. Um, I I could see both sides of the argument. That might be a strong word, uh, but if it were me, I'd probably vote for no. To just keep it real simple at the end, because people might go, "What do you get for?" You know. So anyway, that's just me. But let's move on to the next exciting thing: Tomb of Terror Redux, twentieth anniversary yeah. Redux. Yeah. Nine rooms. This is the best seven rooms, uh, except there's a new puzzle. So it's you yeah. you. you grab the best six of nine and then added a new puzzle cool. technically right that is, that is what we did for sure right. yeah so yeah. seven yeah. rooms a new puzzle room starter packed only what can you tell us about yeah. this dungeon well last year the tomb of terror the uh, i probably got by far the most emails from people begging for tickets for it and oh, i had nothing to do with the tickets really? so, uh, yeah i was like uh so that put my Put a, when I answered about the 20th email about, no, I'm sorry, I don't control tickets. You'll have to <laughs> maybe go to the forums and find. I have like a rote thing I say. Um, I thought, well, maybe next year, if we get enough volunteers, we could go like we've done before, where we kind of do a redo module like we did with um, Odin's Haven and a few mm -hmm. other things. That we, and um, kind of do a, a beginner uh, re, uh, reimagination of it. Um, so this is what we came up with. Uh, I'm really happy with it because it's like solid six awesome rooms. And then um, I came up with this great uh, homage puzzle. For, well, I guess it's great. Uh, great looking <laughs> anyway. Uh, if you say so yourself. On, based on a very iconic part of the Tomb of Horrors module that I wish I'd have thought of last year. Mm. Um, but uh, it should be a really nice room to, to experience. It should be fun and it, looks, it should look great. We're going to hopefully build it uh next week um but uh, all the components look great so wow well no it's good that you didn't think of it last year because now we get to enjoy you know the yeah. best six and a new puzzle room and all the people who missed it last year this is what's great you can you can catch it this year um, yeah i'm hoping to make all those people happy that missed it last year and then also right. um yeah when we finally got enough uh volunteers to add that fourth event we were trying to do that last year um mm -hmm. that was a big decision which one what do we do with this this extra adventure spot that we have um there were a lot of options you could make something brand new we could make something that was like a, a desert nights type of thing where we take some of the best vir virtual stuff and make mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. but um it's because so many people wanted to play this and uh, I was a well um, received module. And then the idea of taking the nine room and converting it down and adding one just to make a super awesome module. I thought, man, what a great way to get new players super excited about the event. If we can put on this really nice show, really nice event. Um, I think it would be a great way to get a lot of new folks into the hobby. So cool. I, that's what we have. Too. I'm excited. Yeah, a seven room uh, with only a start effect. So it's going to be fun and challenging. Uh, all right. So uh, let me jump into the chat here. David says that the uh, he believes Belinda is correct. So we're getting some of the pros here that are saying what what probably is what you've done in the past. Uh, you you it sounds like the the six and above gets one. Um, one extra treasure and then i assume the ninth players would also get the plus one ac uh tom says tomb of terror redux after playing it the first time it teleported you to the start uh minus there all you your go. gear <laughs> there you go. Just, uh, well there you go you, you, i yeah. guess you could say that in coaching did anybody play this last year yeah well this yeah. is what happened <laughs> and this and that's all you get that's your gear <laughs> good idea yeah. tom um nice. 
Yeah, so that, that's that. a free one. You, you can you can say you cu- you thought you're going to write that down. You, you could say you could yeah. put that up. <laughs> Belinda says Tomb of Terror 2023 was a really great dungeon. I'm glad more people will be able to see a version of it this year. I concur. And Bach Aiden says, glad it's back, but wonder about completion tokens. Going to be rough potentially for volunteers to get runs for completion tokens. How would you like to respond to that? Um, yeah, I, um, t- I will. Ex- it's an interesting thing. Um, I don't want to say anything out of turn, but yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'll have to talk to the, see if we can do anything maybe. Um, I don't know how many extra we have. Maybe that's something we can give extra. Maybe, maybe all the volunteers that uh, full timers, maybe that uh, play can uh, or that volunteer can get the completion token for this if we have enough. I think we do. Mm-hmm. So we'll try that. Cool. And yeah. I'll probably have extra too. So Buck Aiden, you know, because uh, I'll be, I'm sure I'll be doing this multiple times. So uh, hit me up. Uh, All right, so the next one to talk about, and again, great questions, everybody. Please keep them coming, uh, is Curse of Crimson Isle. Seven rooms, new puzzle, all the tokens that you have. So this is not, so we got two starter pack and two, all the tokens you want to play with. And this was one of my favorite in 2023. So if you missed it at MomoCon or GameholeCon, it's never been at Gen Con. And this is going to be a great dungeon. It's really, really fun. Uh, I highly recommend it. What can you tell us about uh, Curse of Crimson Isle? Well, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, So in the past, we usually have been able to premiere uh, ventures at Gen Con. That's just been kind of our our standard, but, uh, due to, you know, the kind of the crazy schedule that, uh, COVID caused, uh, we decided to, the way it worked out, this was premiered, um, not at Gen Con. So we're bringing it back, even though it's been played at other cons, a lot of folks haven't had a chance to play it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, also since we played it this many, t- we've shown it these many times, we've been able to tweak it and make it, uh, a better adventure. So you, this has been a well play tested adventure and we, in the, uh, folks running it, the you know the adventure, the adventure coordinators have done a great job of tweaking it to make it as fun as possible. So I think it'll be a nice show for for everybody to play. This is a great adventure. I mean, the sets are awesome, puzzles great, combat's great. Uh, I think this could be like a cornerstone. This is all my personal opinion, though. Uh, a cornerstone dungeon that pro- hopefully it travels well. Uh, you know, physically, but I think this could go to just just any place in the, in the country or any other country. Uh, I think it just really, really works. Just the iconography of it. Um, it's just it's a really, really tight dungeon. So if you haven't played it yet, yeah. I highly recommend it. That's exactly why we did it like this because we needed an adventure that could travel the Game Hole Con and Momo Con and stuff um, that wouldn't have a huge footprint to, to ship, but still would look really good. So if we took it as a challenge. How good of an adventure can we make that uh, doesn't take two big semis to get there? <laughs> um, so, yeah. yeah, I think we did pretty good. Yeah, I, I think even story-wise, I'm a big fan of all the story stuff, too. So I think story-wise, I think it, it it's, you know, it, it's nice and, um, you know, it's got, it's got its own little bubble. So you, you can pretty much... Sure wherever whoever if you've never heard of anything about true dungeon before you could step right in and uh and have fun um all right so there's one more thing to discuss about gen con for all the people who like purple temple of the dune viper now think about that for a second that's that sounds like a scary snake and there's a temple of a scary snake. That can't be good. Uh, so this nice. is seven rooms, all the tokens set in Caldea, Peter's adv- uh, world. And this is a new deluxe multi-path adventure. Those are my favorite because yep. I love to play things multiple times and like to try all the different avenues. And this seems to be right there. What can you tell us about Temple of the Dune Viper? Well, we... Uh, I had a blast doing the Tomb of Terror last year with the nine rooms that you could, you know, you pick nine total, you pick seven, and, you know, that way you kind of tailor your adventure to what you like. If you love combat, you can have five mm-hmm. combat rooms. 
if you want more puzzles, you can have more puzzles. So um, I love that aspect. And then it is more replayable if you want to play more than once. Um, but uh, yeah, we are uh, almost done with this, this dungeon completely designed. And uh, we're going to start building it next week. I'm typing up the last room as we speak. Um, but it looks to be pretty cool. Um, I hate to say awesome because they say that about everything, but um, I really think the stats are going to be, as you can kind of see, are going to be are going to be a top notch and um, got some great NPCs designed, I think. And um, yeah, the the whole story should be pretty good. To under, it should be fun and easy to understand for new folks, and it'll be real clear what you need to do. And the end has got some pretty cool special effects. So I think we're going to end up making a. There's no, uh, yeah, no, There, every room here is really cool and some very cool interactive puzzles, I think. Wow. Now, um, someone earlier, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, uh, I can't find it. Um, mentioned, like, where in the storyline something else existed. Uh, how does this fit, if at all, with our virtual uh adventure story wise great question well we have the the spring vtd series that ends um yeah uh, in may i'm not gonna give right, away may. what happened with that one uh, but at the end of there you find out uh, something something <laughs> okay. and then you decided to go to the onyx or i'm sorry the golden um obelisk to get that something and then from oh. there you decide, you know what, um, I think it'd be a really good idea to go to the Temple of the Dune Viper to do something with this thing that you've collected. So, um, yeah, it all ties in. It's all very, uh, very nicely wove together with uh, there'll be some virtual NPCs that show up that uh, you'll see you'll get to finally interact with in person and it should be a fun you know, all year long type story arc that's all closely woven in together. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, uh, Christopher says you're the one before or after Desert Nights. Yeah. Thank you. That you gave me an idea for this question. So let me just kind of repeat it and make sure I, I understand here. Uh, we've got your VTD. This is for the people who care about the story placement, but allow me to do this little um, pref preface here. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. You can jump around. I mean, a long time ago, there were puzzle, there were combat, and there were summon, part one, part two. You could play pretty much in any any order you want. Uh, because yeah. if you played part two of something first, it would say, in part one, you blah, blah, blah. You successfully did this. And that you got all the info you really need. But if you want to hear about it and actually do it, you can then go do part one. But if you were... Uh, story oriented and really wanted to do it right in order you play all the virtuals then you play golden obelisk uh, either at origins or here at gen con and then story again just story wise the temple of the dune viper do i have that right yep. you are correct sir yep. okay cool cool okay okay Okay, I'm ready. I'm excited. I, I love the story stuff. Uh, all right, so uh, those are all of our uh, Gen Con topics. So we saw the teaser trailer, and actually, let's maybe do a quick little uh, review here. We saw the teaser trailer, and then we uh, learned that there's going to be four adventures at Gen Con. Uh, four, four, and there's two of them that are starter pack only two of them um that are not starter pack only you can do any uh, any combination of tokens that you want and two of them have new puzzle rooms uh and three of them are seven rooms and one of them is four <laughs> rooms i think i got all that right and uh one of them is is set in caldea and who that's a lot of information uh and tom says 124 days until gen con yeah and counting yeah yeah so that's that's coming um all right great so if there's any more questions uh you know 
speak now forever hold your peace because we're going to wrap it up here in a couple seconds uh let's see kevin says it's going to be a lot of runs i agree i'm going to do at least a couple of each uh christopher has a question dune viper is the end of desert night series or will vtds to follow to continue great question very good question um next month We'll have more information about what's happening in the fall and all the other events. Um, but the plan is, is anything virtual that's done in the fall will take place within that interwoven story arc. And it'll take place after your uh, delve, in, delve into the, uh, into the uh, Temple of the Dune Viper. So, yeah, we have a, we have a cool story arc ready to as a kind of an epilogue to that. And uh, it actually even sets up next year's adventures. So it's all one continuous thing. Yeah. Did, did you say next year's adventure? Yeah, are you, are adventure. Are you, are you, are you uh, adventures? Are you trying to tell us something? I don't know. Yeah, we will have adventures next year. That's the plan. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh. I, I love the fact that uh, we've tried to keep the adventures all well woven well together. So for the hardcore people that really love the, to play, I want to keep them entertained. And, 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 and I think it's more enjoyable if all the adventures are linked, even though they're somewhat loosely. But sometimes uh, I, I think it just makes it more fun to find out what's the next story beat in the whole thing so yeah i i would fall into that category I, I kind of like even if it's just a little nugget and because you found this you were transported poof and now you're here in a village and there's a tavern i i, I don't care if, if there's something that connects it i'm in uh yeah. but that brings me to another thing that i love about true dungeon it's something for everybody you could be completely nuts and and collect all the tokens you could just get a 10 pack once a year <laughs> does it yeah I, I, yeah yeah i'm over i'm over here uh, and you can trade the rest of the year with others uh you can volunteer and then there's all kinds of different ways to volunteer and just on and on and on and on there's just so many different aspects and avenues and ways to enjoy true dungeon there's no wrong way however you're having fun with true dungeon is the right way uh, so it's just another thing I love about True Dungeon. Okay, so uh, let's see. From chat, Gilstrife says, can't wait to go to Gen Con. I know. I'm pumped. Uh, I've already, just a couple days ago, I got my plane tickets, uh, and the hotels are already done. Uh, so, yeah, I'm ready. Ready. Let's do it. Uh, Buck Aiden says, no wonder the big push for volunteers this year. Now we know. Uh, yes. Christopher says, Wow uh and zal phoenix oh no did you fireball jeff no. <laughs> uh christopher says love the adventure series and looking forward to getting um his volunteer scheduled so yes i bet all the volunteers Ooh. are looking forward to that all right so uh that brings us to the end here jeff is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience here before we let you go uh, let's see. Well, um, yeah. So I just wanted to say uh, to the vets that um, uh, that we're looking at the current, you know, um, adventure uh, menu there. Um, since COVID, things have been a little out of whack and a little, uh, you know, we're taking stutter steps as we were trying to get the machine back up and running. Um, and I think finally next year in 2025, um, we'll be back to normal. Um, so next year, uh, Gen Con will have like all new adventures where everything's caught up. And uh, ne next year for the vets, they're gonna enjoy the fact that Gen Con's gonna be jam packed with new stuff. So it, it's finally nice to get back to normal, I think, hopefully. Wow. Okay, so it, it sounds like you're saying uh, after the you, you've pushed that that boulder up the hill finally, and it, it's yeah. time to, to to keep on climbing and and um, doing bigger and better things. So, well, on behalf of of me and anyone else who agrees with me, uh, I get it. I get it, and I I think. Uh, yeah. uh, thanks to the thanks to the volunteers for coming back. It's been oh, a yeah. slog to get 
you know, everybody back comfortable with coming back to cons and, you know, um, and it's just, it's great that it looks like for 2025, we'll be back to kind of where we were pre pandemic. So that'd be nice. Wow. And what's insane to think about right after 2025. Yeah. I'm good with math here about one thing, uh, counting by one, is 2026, and that's RainCon. Yeah. Oh, man, what a year. Um, all right, so let, I get, let's get final final check-in on the chat here before I let you go. Uh, so Gilstrife and Chris are both looking for those emails, um, and Chris says, great info. Do you think you'll have true grind? I think you mean it. Gen Con, right? Chris, do you think you'll have true grind yeah. next year at Gen Con? Uh, in 25, it's a possibility. Um, Paul would do an amazing job. Um, it just depends on space and other things. Um, I like it going, having it at Game Hole Con, and Paul may be too, um, just because it's a more relaxed, fun atmosphere there. And Gen Con's pretty crazy. Time mm -hmm. schedules are pretty tight. Space is so tight. Um, there is a new hotel going in at, uh, Indy. They're building it now. Uh, I think it's supposed to be ready in 26 hmm. and there's a chance that it might gain us some more space. Who knows? But right now we're really tight on space. So, um, I, I, I'd have to talk to Paul, but my, my guess is probably crew grind will be just left for probably the smaller cons where we have more room and, the and, the schedules aren't so tight on everything so got it okay well hopefully that drums up more tenants for game hole con which i mean is pretty incredible if, if, if gen con's too big for you boy i highly recommend game hole con i mean it's it's incredible yeah. and uh uh hopefully origins goes well this year and san japan goes well this year and you know you go back to both next year as well um, all right, let me check one more time here on the chat. Every time looking forward, the adventures of uh, so Kevin says the adventures have always been great. Can't wait to see next year as well. And Chris was talking about Gen Con. All right, well there we go. So uh, Jeff, thank you so much for uh, being on yep. the show. It's such a such a treat to talk with you and catch up with you and share cool tidbits uh, from the the horse himself, the horses and the horse's mouth. So thank you very much, Jeff. I hope. Yeah, you and the family uh, are, are doing well. And please give my love to everybody. And thanks again, Jeff. Thanks for having me. All right. See Take you, buddy. care, everybody. See you next time. All right. There you Take have care. it. That was Jeff Martin, the creator of True Dungeon, with some incredible announcements about Gen Con. Four adventures at Gen Con. Wow. Uh, it's going to be unbelievable. Uh, so much information, too. The new puzzles, starter packs, seven rooms, uh, four rooms. Uh, whew, I'm going to have to rewatch this again just to, to get all that information. Ah, and speaking of that, I probably should have asked Jeff this. Uh, I believe after this show, so if you're watching live, right after this, I believe they're going to to uh, either maybe email the, the newsletter list uh, and or at least put it on the True Dungeon forums. So I think they're going to be updating the Gen Con information uh, really soon for the public too. So anything that you 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 just saw, uh, instead of having to rewind and watch it again, uh, I think it's going to be available for the general public on the forums. And if you're watching this video and have never heard of the forums, go to truedungeon.com and you'll be able to see the forums there. It's an incredible community of people who love to uh, play games and love to uh, uh, help each other. Uh, it's one of the best communities ever. And if I'm being completely uh, upfront and blunt, the community itself is is the number one reason why I do this because it's just a, a great community and I really want to help it grow. Speaking of helping it grow, please do that liking and subscribing and sharing, etc. It's really good for the show and spreading the love of True Dungeon. And thank you everyone in the in the chat and everyone who watched this live and for everyone who's watching this in the future. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget one of my favorite things to say. It's really hard to frown when you're smiling. So, smile.